Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Sunday Messages. I am back. And I recently took a poll on my Instagram to see what you all are struggling with the most out of a few different topics. So this is the poll that I took and I'm going to be doing to, I'm, I will eventually do podcast episodes for all of these topics over, you know, the course of this month, but we are starting with what got the most votes today. So I gave everyone three different options, telling a better story, improving your self-concept or new characteristics feeling hard to access. And yes, there is overlap between these two things, but I think about them as being three different dimensions, three different skills. So let me explain the difference between these three things. So telling a better story is what impacts your inner dialogue. And of course, character work and improving your self-concept can affect, it can bleed into telling a better story. But storytelling is a separate skill. On its own, your ability to conjure the words, to find the right language, to play with language in a feel in a way that feels really good to you, understanding the different words and how they resonate with you, that is a skill set. So that's one of the reasons why I'm treating it as different. Your self-concept is how you see yourself how you consider yourself and your identity. Now, what got the highest votes was new characteristics feeling hard to access. I'm not surprised that this got the most votes. This is the most difficult thing for people. And this falls into the category of character work. That's how I describe it. Archetypes, we're going to talk about archetypes a little bit today, but this is also... The core reason, the core thing that I noticed people struggling with, and this is why I created Once Upon a Time, like this is what we're doing the majority of in the mini mastermind that I'm running right now. So character work requires you to look at things outside of yourself because it is really, really difficult if you want to feel into new experiences that you have no past history with. For example, if you want to feel into greater levels of wealth, but you've had the experience of being broke your whole life, that's going to feel really foreign. If you want a loving relationship, but you've been single your whole life, it can get really frustrating trying to feel into an experience that you haven't had. So you have no reference point to go off of. Insert character work. So instead of relying on your history, instead of relying on memory, instead of relying on any of that stuff from your past, which is our memories and pasts are what give us evidence or it's what gives us that reference material for us to feel into a new experience with or more of something, right? So a lot of the time we kind of have to rifle around in our past and conjure things, conjure emotions based on those past experiences. Now, a lot of you are doing this in a detrimental way, right? So if you constantly pull up memories of past failures, then you're harmonizing with failure and you're bringing greater connection to failure. So it's like you're cozying up with failure every day because you're thinking about, oh yeah, that one time I failed and all of this other stuff that I failed with and this time that things didn't work out. And because your brain has a tendency to orient towards avoiding pain, that's, I know that that's not a universal truth, but for many people, that is like the biggest hurdle to get over is constantly scouting for pain, actively changing your focus can feel like a challenge, particularly if you are trying to feel into those zones that are really foreign. So how I do this is character work. So let's let's back up a bit and just focus on archetypes. I 
talk about archetypes a lot. Archetypes come up in pretty much every single one of my programs because it gives you reference material. Let's say you you have a beautiful table. I give the example of table all the time. There's a beautiful table that you have in mind. Table is the archetype. So there's tables with four legs, there's tables with eight legs, there's tables that are long, there's tables that are rectangle, there's tables that are square, there's tables that are blue, there's tables that have one leg, there's tables that are round, there's all different types of tables, but table itself is the archetype. All of the other expressions of table are, are just different dimensions of that one core archetype. Okay, so the archetype is what can give you the reference material for something that you want to create, even if it doesn't exist yet. And this is why I go on and on about archetypes. I'm like, it's really helpful to think about things in terms of archetypes, because you absolutely have seen a TV show, you've read a book, you've watched a movie, you've seen photos, you've walked past a house. There are different things around you that maybe you have not experienced yourself, but through observation of another or through reading some material, watching some material, you have experienced sensations that are foreign. And that's what we have to use. If you don't have the reference material within yourself, you have to go outside of yourself for some inspiration, just to even pull on some threads that are going to be helpful and bring you into that point where you're in character development. So I always, always, always start with archetypes. And then what this ends up turning into is embodiment, right? So then that's the act as if, think as if, speak as if, eat as if, do all of the things as if. Oh, this is reminding me. There was there was a woman, I saw this video and she was talking about self-concept and people all the time in in the comment section, they're like, "Okay, we hear you about self-concept, but how how do I do the self-concept work? What is that?" It's character work. It's character work. And the interesting thing is she answered it perfectly. She said, you design a character and then you act as if. It is that simple. But what I find is that the piece that people struggle with is the character development. It's the storytelling. It is those nitty gritty details that you kind of need to sculpt out, sculpting out a storyline and a psychological profile and a history and really understanding the character that is the most difficult part for people. But in short, that is the work. So in terms of if you're saying, I want to have... I want to feel into more money. Well, then you would want to go look at different reference material outside of yourself and start practicing and acting as if. That is the simplest way for me to put it. And this also is the thing that people struggle with the most, understandably so. So let me speak a little bit deeper to this. Your ability to imagine, your ability to pretend, your ability to act as if is where the goods come from. So I understand that there's a lot of, there's a lot of argument and disagreement about the idea of fake it till you make it. And I completely understand because that can also get people into trouble, right? If you, if you say, okay, now act wealthy, act from the space of your next level financial self, 
you can go get into trouble if you do that prematurely. If you start making purchases that are way, way, way out of bounds, set off your nervous system, make you spiral, that's not good advice. So this is why a while back I told people, instead of thinking about act as if, even though that is technically correct, think about it in terms of feeling as if. So just pretend We are pretending you are in the same way that actors are acting as if you are getting into character in the same way. So that's the skill. I'm, I am giving you the how to in telling you that (laughs) that really is it, but you have to practice and practice and practice. So the more that you familiarize yourself with Um, the characteristics and the traits, even if they're foreign, if you study them and you imagine and you practice and you do that enough, you will strengthen all of the neural pathways. Okay. You'll strengthen your emotional connection. You will strengthen your expectations. All of that stuff will come as a result of practice. So that that is essentially how you do it. I would just not depend or rely on memory or past experiences in order to try to shoehorn those experiences into a new a new sensation. But the thing is, you have to get good at imagination. You have to get good at that part. You have to get good at pretending in some capacity. Like just just imagine, just pretend, or or when people are talking about money manifestation, a lot of the time what they'll do is, okay, pretend I give you, just imagine I give you a check for $100,000 or $10,000 or whatever. Your response to that, and there could be a lot of stuff. Let me go on a, uh, let me make a side note about this. Some of you might shrink around the idea of being handed a check. Some of you might feel like, yes, that is totally normal. I can absolutely expect that. This feels good to me. So there's all sorts of different emotional baggage that can come up as a result of you imagining these things in which that would indicate more more work needs to be done around your expectations and around your beliefs and around whatever funk is coming up. If you are in money magic, you know how to do mental mold. You want to do mental mold around those things, right? So there's all of these little nooks and crannies that come up around you imagining. Some of you might know the concept of redlining, which I came up with a while ago. That's where you get that emotional kickback. You think, you pretend, you imagine an experience, and then you get the emotional kickback that says no. Uh Uh-uh. Okay. So that is where there's work to be done. Okay, now let me back up and go back into, okay, pretending. You pretending this desired experience has happened. You imagining, because you can't go based off of 3D. If you want something different, you have to get into this unknown bubble, this unknown space, this Time that has not passed yet, that block of time and space is where you have to start creating something different. And how you create something different is emotionally, you have to emotionally go there first. Now, a lot of people get really locked up around this. There's a lot of stories. And this is one of the reasons why I'm distinguishing self-concept character and storytelling. Because storytelling, your ability to storytell can lubricate the character work. It can help. It can support. It can make things a lot easier. Storytelling, your ability to tell a story that the universe believes that you believe because your ability to get behind it, even if you can't see it, that's where the magic happens. If you're saying hollow words like money comes to me easily and you don't believe it, and there's all of this resistance in your body, 
that comes with saying that, then you're not doing it right. Because the only thing that matters is your emotion. So if you are, and this is why Shakespeare is the guide for this mastermind is because you, all the world is a stage. Okay. You are performing for the universe in terms of your acting ability. Okay. So we can't go off of 3d. That's a terrible, terrible, terrible reference point to use. If you want something different. So you have to get into some type of acting as if pretending imagination, however you want to see it, feeling as if all of that stuff, you've got to find a way, an avenue to get into those feeling states so that you can start emitting something different. And this is why affirmations a lot of the time just become regurgitated material that doesn't result in anything rapidly coming to fruition because if it's hollow then who cares now sometimes you can repeat something so so diligently to the point where you start to feel it i think that that's i think that's kind of the hard way to go about it like trying to jam to like jam a thought into your mind and make it automatic when it does not give you any relief or it does not result in improved emotion. I think that that's the hard way to go about it. So one of the things that I tell people when they're doing mental mold is mental mold only works if you actually buy into the reframing that you're doing. And the same is true for affirmations. Affirmations are effective if they genuinely result in a shift in your emotion. So if you're saying an emotion, I am loved, I am prosperous, blah, 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 but you don't feel it, then there's no point in that affirmation. So you would want to choose something that you actually feel and you can actually get behind. Okay, let's back up. I kind of went off, I went off the rails into storytelling for a second. Bringing it back, bringing it back to character work. What else do I want to say about this? I did this recently with a client in big kid school. I think I, I think I talked about this. We had a week called character week where I was teaching what we're going to be doing in once upon a time, like just in a very mini, mini, mini version. And all I did in that one session of big kid school was go over sculpting out a character. We didn't even go that deep and it took like an hour. And this is the part, this is the part that I know people get really jammed up around is actually the character creation understanding the character, understanding all of the nooks and crannies of the character, and then continually connecting to that character. That's the piece. That's the rub. Because then the other thing that I know to be true about people is they want rapid results, yet they throw in the towel quickly. And one of you know, already know what I'm about to say is that numbing is one of the things that will prevent you from doing the things that you know you should be doing. It's so funny because we all know that we should be doing energetic work. We should be accessing the feeling states. We know this, we know this, we know this, we know this. And yet people are so quick to shift into numbing. So let me go into the reason why I'm treating once upon a time like an intensive and it applies to this is because there's stuff that you need to be doing every day. And the reason why I know people have time is because people consume a lot of media. You watch movies, the TV is on, you're scrolling on things, you're listening to this podcast, you're doing all of that, you have plenty of time to do some energetic work period. 
And it doesn't even take that long. This isn't something that is super labor intensive, but it does require it does require focus and attention and it requires you to do it. So from day one, as soon as we start once upon a time, I am going deep into it. We are starting, we are sculpting the character so that you have something to connect to every single day. And then we do processes. It's a very process heavy program, mind you, where you are doing processes every day. Because the thing is, if you want results fast, and this is where my mind is at these days when it comes to my creations, is what can create results super fast? If you want them super fast, then you have to access the energetic pattern consistently, just just consistently, over and over and over again, you have to touch base with it. And so this is one of my primary focuses. And once upon a time is we are diving in head first. We are going into it. We are being super hardcore with it. You are going to know what you're going to be embodying from day one. And we're doing the character sculpting together. And that is honestly the hardest part. People are like, Where do I start? And there's, I can't even go into it. Like I said, doing the character development, it took me an hour with that one client and we didn't even go that deep. We didn't even go as deep as I could go. And so that's why it's, it's a meaty because we're talking about all of the things that you have not experienced, that you have not tapped into all of the stuff that feels foreign, we have to sculpt out, okay, what is the blueprint for that experience? What are the thought patterns? What is the story here? What is the background? What is, what is the way of being that we can access? And then you going into processes that help you harmonize with that. And if you're doing that consistently, of course you are going to get results. And the thing is, even with something like mental mold, mental mold, simply put, is just thought reframing. It's massaging your thoughts into better places. That's all it is. But when you're diligent with it, things shift fast. I had a client recently who had uh, some resistance to mental mold and she was she was like worried is this going to activate negative things is this going to uh make the law of attraction bring me more of this and i told her no because you're actively recalibrating you're not basking in misery you're using the starting place and then shifting it and tweaking it so that you're feeling relief and as she started doing this consistently it was like night and day within a week i felt like i was talking to a completely different person things really started moving so on and so forth so things can happen really really fast even with the smallest tool but it is the consistency piece that i want to remind you and i think that that's why energetics are not complicated And they're not complicated and the the, um, processes are all over the internet. The question is, are you doing them? Are you doing them? You know what to do. Like a lot of this, as I'm saying, okay, create a character, embody it every day, connect to it, think, feel, act as if, whatever is within the scope of what is safe and secure for you, right? Not going and doing financially reckless things in the name of your wealth identity, okay? That's not what you want to be doing. But it's like it, it, that is it. That is it. So it's not a lack of understanding. It's not a lack of tools. It's not a lack of people telling you this is what you do. There's plenty of that. There's an infinite number of processes but it's it's a consistency thing it's a dedication thing it's a i am choosing deciding and committing to doing this and i am going to do it every day that's like the big thing that people are not doing 
because, oh, I heard the best analogy. It was in an Abraham Hicks segment, but it's just coming to mind right now. She described manifestation as developing a photo. So if you're in a dark room and you're developing a photo, it's like at first it looks red. It looks like there's just some shadows. You're not really able to make out the full photo. But then by the time you go to the end of, you know, the series of chemicals that you put the photo through, then there's a full vivid photo, full color. So that's exactly how a manifestation is, is it, it looks indistinguishable. It looks like there's just some shadows. There's just some hints. There's nothing really to look at in the beginning, but it is developing. It is in progress. It will result in a full vivid image. It will result in it being full color. That will happen, but you have to hold it long enough. You have to be consistent with the development process so that the energetics will do their thing. So that the energy will solidify in 3D. You have to be consistent enough for that solidification to take place. What you can't do is say, this isn't working, so now I'm going to be lazy and I'm going to instead focus on old patterns. Well, then you can, you can expect this will be business as usual. That's what will happen. Let's see, what else? For those interested in Once Upon a Time, I want to talk a little bit about it, even though I'm sure you have you have somewhat of an idea, as I've already outlined part of it. We are working on three different things, okay? So we are working on your character, the character that easily experiences, damn it, this reminds me of another thing that I want to say. I'm sure a lot of people have checked out once I said I was talking about once upon a time, but for those who stayed, let me go into this. So if you're familiar with a point of attraction, okay, Abraham Hicks talks about this, or another way you could look at it is what you're emitting, okay, what what frequency you're in, okay, all of those things would count. You you now, the version of you right now, and the character that we're going to be working on in Once Upon a Time, that, those two characters have different points of attraction. And this is what everyone, when I did a little experiment in big kid school with this, this is what everyone found, is that when they were in character... It resulted in different things coming to them. And we only did this for a week and they were able to see a big difference. So you right now, you are magnetically pulling in specific things until you shift into that character that has a different point of attraction, that's emitting a different frequency as a result of the thought and emotional patterns. That's what you're actually shifting. So the character has a different frequency that it's inhabiting. And then as a result, what ends up materializing is different. So you really are shifting the whole, the whole thing that you're emitting. So how it's going to go in Once Upon a Time is we get right into building your character. This is the hardest part for people is just the building. So I am the one who helps you do all of this. We go into what is the character? What are you wanting? Who are you wanting to be? What are you, what is the experience? What are you needing more of in terms of traits, characteristics, beliefs about yourself, so on and so forth. So we figure all of that out from day one so that you have that reference material that you will be working with for the duration and however long you want to do it beyond that or anytime you want to make a shift after that. 
Then I think the next place that I'll go is storytelling. That will be the second thing that we end up working on. And mind you, these mastermind calls are going to be much longer than usual because this material is way, way, way more in depth in terms of processing, brainstorming, figuring things out we need. I'm going to be very hands-on with this. So Voxer is likely going to be very active because you're going to need to let me know what's going on. Let me know where the resistance lives, all of that good stuff. And it's short. It's one month. So you're going to need to be in touch with me, maintain contact with me so you can make the most of it. Now, storytelling is developing the skill of how you are talking to yourself. This is so undervalued, in my opinion, because we all know that our inner voice is, you know, it originates in childhood. And so it's going to be reflective of some of those things. You might get some echoes of the past, echoes of past experiences. And so that's part of what drives the same repetitive experiences in your life is because of that inner dialogue. And so when you get good at shifting inner dialogue, paying close attention to tone, what tone are you taking with yourself, getting really into developing what what do you want to happen and how would you be speaking to yourself as if and what type of words feel most resonant with you and what feels really good to you developing all of that is an art it just is because how you talk to yourself is going to result in many different effects we know that there's infinite tones that we can take with ourselves it's not like there's just an optimistic tone or there's just a nasty tone, there's all different dimensions. And those different dimensions of tone, how you're speaking to yourself, activate different emotions. So that's that's how all of this is working together, is how you're speaking to yourself is what makes you feel. Okay, sometimes, yes, the nervous system can jerk you around and it can jerk your mind around. But when you're not in that space of being super dysregulated, you'll notice that how you're speaking to yourself is what makes you feel, okay? And so this also implies that there's many, many, many different ways to talk to yourself, and it's about developing that inner voice in a way that is going to yield the type of results that you want to get, and it's and results being emotion first. And then the third piece of this is self-concept and identity, right? So identity, who you are, how you're perceiving yourself. And this is something where it's, it's different from character work in the sense that it's a bit more personal and it's something that is not going to be that far away. By the time we get to the identity piece, you will already have practiced familiarizing yourself with foreign patterns that are desired so much to the point where the identity piece begins to make more sense. Where how you're seeing yourself is something that just makes more sense. And it feels more attainable and it feels easier and you begin to understand that how you perceive yourself and then how others are perceiving you are tight. They're they're a package deal. They are bundled together. And so this is about self-image. It, it, th- this is what makes it different from character work, right? So character work is just getting getting that blueprint, getting that thing to feel into the sensations, experiences, emotions, so on and so forth. Then the identity is self-perception, how you're thinking and feeling about yourself and practicing this over and over. So anyway, I'm very excited about this because I know that we're going to go deep. It's going to be potent. It's going to be fast. I am so freaking excited about this because it's one of those things where yeah if if you commit to doing this some things are going to change a lot of things are going to change 
it's not it's not even up for debate it's not even up for question like of course it will and so that's just how i feel about all of this is like duh the to me once upon a time is like duh of course in the same way that apex is duh of course of course this is going to have an effect of course this is going to make a difference of course, this is going to change some things. There's no question. If you're changing your thoughts and your feelings and your story and you're feeling into those new dimensions of yourself that you desire to cultivate and foster within yourself and develop those inner faculties, duh, everything is going to change. So I'm excited about this because of my knowing that you will get kick-ass results. The fact that I had people in big kid school who did this for a week and were already like, oh, this popped and this was different and people were treating me differently. And I had this experience and I manifested this that was all consistent with the character work that we did. I mean, it's just clear. It's just clear as day. So anyway, applications are open, limited seats because it is an intensive, it is a mastermind. And I'm just so excited. I feel ready. And what else? Any final thoughts that I want to say? That is all for now. I will be back later with more podcast topics. I just asked for some some topics on Instagram and I got some really good requests. So I'm excited to bring those to you as well. If this was helpful, please send it to someone. Please subscribe. Please share. Please do all of the things. Let me know that you like this video. Give it a thumbs up or wherever you're listening to this. I appreciate all the love. Don't forget, if you want to apply for Once Upon a Time, please go to the description box, go to the show notes, wherever you're listening to this, and the application is there for you, all of the details on what we're going to be doing inside. And that's all for now. Have a good one, everyone. Bye.